Hello and welcome again to our weekly look back at the weekend fixtures. Uh, most of them on Clubber uh, TV uh, in the club championship, particularly the week gone by was the first round of both the Kerry Petroleum Senior Club Championship and the Intermediate Club Championship. We'll also be looking forward to the most important games this coming weekend, which you can see live on Clubber. So get that Clubber pass. It's well worth it. And uh, we have uh, another week of games the following week. Then we have semi-finals of the Senior Club. And we have quarter-finals, semi-finals of the Intermediate Club as, long, as well as the two junior uh, competitions right up to the start of the Senior Football Championship. So well worth getting that annual pass or you can subscribe for a particular game this coming weekend. Keep an eye on social media for the details. Now, a bit of a reduced panel tonight because uh, there are two absent stars, but Evan Horn and Nilo Callan have opted out. Uh, one of them is a playing golf, uh, and the other guy is in a foreign holiday to Valencia Island. Um, but with me, just to pick up uh, the, uh, the slack or the loose reins, to my left, I have John O'Dowd from uh, a freelance journalist, of course, from Tarbert, and he also does some national work as well as being associated with the Kerryman newspaper. And on the right, I have a well-known historian, raconteur, <laughs> a comedian, and he also have a, has a great knowledge of football. I, th Pro I think none of those words mean what you think they mean. Yes, <laughs> and I think also uh, his fondness will be noticed for the Spa Club, and uh, Jimmy is a member of the Spa Club, and has and been, and him. all his family. Um, and of course, he can be, feel very happy th uh, tonight because uh, they managed a draw. We're here at the uh, Dr. Croak's Clubhouse. We'd like to thank them again uh, for the use of their facilities, although they may not yet know it. Um, <laughs> so, we're going to start now with highlights of Group A, Round one, uh, and the first game there what, that we're going to look at is Spa and Temple No. Sorry, yeah. Uh, now, welcome here to beautiful sunny Glanfest to see Spa and Temple No open their senior club championship campaigns. Two teams who know each other very well. We're straight into the action. Evan Cronin with a beautiful ball shake, Cronin. And that's David Spillane opening. Great ball. Great ball. Sean Sheehan across. First effort at the post. Kerry under 28 and Crowley. And the sides are level. Great score and by Aidan Crowley there. And, uh, Spillane gets the ball one on one. We all know what he's capable of. But that's a good ball in as well. Darren Moynihan in and... Oh, 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 oh. oh, closing that Gavin, down. Gavin, it's Gavin goes for long run. This is the one for Josh Holmes. He's in there again. This is down to Gillian, and he's for the same. Oh, 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 I'll tell you, I was okay with the second one, but I, I thought Gavin Crowley had a bit of a case there, to be honest. Oh. Oh. Killian. Very well done by Killian, but I'll tell you. And that's a good ball, good ball up the field. And Dave, David Spillane with his second point of the day. The two sides heading into the dressing room, but there's an awful long way to go in this game yet. It's... Um, oh, 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 oh. Adrian Spillane. That's all done. And there they are. Tide Morley gathering. 
Mikey Moynihan, nice little chip into Dara Moynihan. That's... They have a bit of space at the moment, that's it. John Rice, John Rice. I know, Rice man free inside. ahead of him. He takes it into the square and it's gone straight over the bar. Whoa! Score. A great score. By James Grant. Straight out of like a flash. He's got, he's got Brian Crowley inside him. This can really... Oh, Brian has got the left leg. No, he has all the bar, yes, that's it. Great score. Great work. If you get it, if you if you get a chance, clip it over the bar and look to win the kick out. Yes, Evan, Evan has got it, and we think. Who's going to take the shot on? On to Evan. The ball goes into Evan Cronin, Evan Cronin throws it inside and it's a great pass, he's got it in the sky, no! he's gone wide, he's got a 45. Yes! 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 Over the bar. Uh, <laughs> that was a kind of a late decision by the young man. Yes, uh, i got to tell you, I didn't know, was it over the bar? Okay. Was there a chance of a touch on the goal? Was it a 45? Was it wide? We'll five. take it. You we'll definitely thought, take it. The umpire thought it was wide for a while too. That's, but anyway, we have a little I'll, game. Is that the I'll way? I'll tell yeah. you, there's points coming and from all angles down in that goal. Over, yeah. so, a draw. And, a draw and I think you'd have to say, after making a strong start, Spod definitely got out of jail there. Out of jail, yeah. That they showed to character to do it. Right, so uh, Spa and Temple Law, the game ended in a welter of excitement, a draw. Jimmy was present, obviously. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Spa won 14, Temple Law 2 11. Was a draw a fair result? Should Spa have won it based on their first, perfor first half performance, or were Temple Law unlucky not to escape to victory? I have to say, I think that Spa will be very happy to come out of there with a the point. I think Temple Noor will consider the points dropped. There was a very strong wind, and we all knew the wind was going to have a big bearing. Spa were well on top. I think it was 1-8 to 1-3 at half time. Yeah. Um, great goal by Evan Cronin, who was outstanding for Spa. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Gavin Crowley and Josh... Crowley Holland for Temple No just dictated the play. Reed Tig Morley was excellent, you know, Killian did most of the scoring, but I thought those two in particular just outstanding vision, great passes. It was actually a very good game of football. Five points at half time, I thought it might be enough. Temple No absolutely took over the second half. Uh, they pressed on Spa's kick out. Both teams did that with the wind uh, to very good effect. Made it very hard for the opposition to come out of their half. So that was it, it was Spa's way in the first half. Second half turned Temple Noah's way. I mean, they really put a lock on all of our kick outs. We just couldn't couldn't find outlets. They left a couple of chances behind them. I thought they had chances to close the game out. Um, Adrian Spillane with a brilliant goal. Great ball in by Gavin Crowley. Spin and shot, that's a superb goal. With six minutes left, Spa were three points down. Evan Cronin got a point. Spa won a free. And I was wondering, would he lob it in and go for the goal? Or, you know... We were would, probably would needed time at this time. Did, did, did he trust himself and the team enough in the time left to get the two points? Put the free straight over the bar and dying seconds... Evan works his way in along the end line and fists over from a very tight angle to get us a draw. Very good draw. Spa were down a good few bodies. I thought both teams played really well, really entertaining game of football. I have to say I enjoyed it, but I was also fairly relieved. Yeah, right. Tell me, how did the, you mentioned about Ty Marley? You, Dara Minan, obviously playing with the Spa. The yes. county men coming back like two weeks after the disappointing result against uh, Armagh. Um, how did they play in general? Killian was there, Adrian, I, of course. Yeah. I would say the big names on both teams really stepped up. Yeah. You know, I, I'd be including the likes of, as I say, Evan, Shane Cronin, Dan Donoghue, Owen Fitzgerald, you know, Spa's leaders showed leadership. 
Tyke Morley again any any time the Temple One leads in the lift, he was the guy there. I, I Yeah, it, 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 it was it was one of those I would say everyone did everything that they could. You yeah. you couldn't kind of fault anyone if you know yeah. what I mean. It was yeah. a good game of football. I I, I would say we were uh, I you couldn't call it look. We hung in there enough to earn the draw. Um but as I say, Temple Noble will definitely consider that points dropped. Uh, one, one final question on the game. Dan O'Donoghue was in with Kerry at one stage and then uh, he had topped out uh, and he hasn't been recalled since. He strikes me as a guy. Shane Cronin's another guy um, and obviously Evan. Those three players in particular, is there any mileage in maybe... Jack, having a look at them or introduced them, or are they gone beyond that stage? You'd know now. I'll give you a very simple, very honest answer. I think any, I, I don't think it's even worth discussing at this time of year. You can be absolutely sure that Jack is running the rule over all the club championships. He, mm-hmm. He's having a look at all these games. It wouldn't surprise me if he has a club subscription himself, you know? Yeah. Um, but you're not going to be calling in anyone at this stage anyway. You know, you, you've got a couple of weeks. For every player out there, you're interested in County Jersey, this, this yeah. is where you have to lay down yeah. the marker. If you can't produce in these, you're not going to be in the conversation, Joe, when it, when it comes to winter and coming into training camps. Yeah. Um, but um, everyone, yeah. it, 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 it's too early to tell it. You know, when 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 you're picking kind of a team of the championship, maybe afterwards or something, that's the time to start considering county fellows. You know. Yeah, yeah, John. Thanks for that, uh, Jimmy. We're now going to show you highlights of the other game in Group A. That was between Ratmore and Kenmer Shamrocks, and we'll be back with some analysis after these highlights. level so they'll be you know they're quite as astute defense here albeit some youngsters there in the middle of them but can mayor are on the attack again around on the left hand side and uh, paul o'connor passed it off and over the bar it goes there there to paul and is that over the bar? They will free up the other end, um, banking on winning back position. And here comes Jack Atlantic. To Stephen O'Brien. O'Brien out the field. James McCarthy. Another man that has worn a carry jersey. Uh, Rat Moorman. Uh, I think it was Shane O'Sullivan that won that one. As Stephen O'Brien takes on him, it's very easy to know Stephen O'Brien with his jinking run. He goes left, he went right, and he pops it over the bar, Stephen O'Brien. To Dara O'Shea. Dara, back to Jimmy Lehan. He's a great, well able to score himself, Jimmy Lehan. We haven't seen much of him yet. Sean O'Shea creates a space for himself, and that's a super score by Sean O'Shea. Well, we've seen him do it so often. I've been watching Kerry football for uh, club level for a number of years. He is very, very happy and very adequate. Uh, at the edge of the square here and can be a real, real uh, potent full back. And that's a full forward to say. Up, up in front of him to his right, he goes past him though, looking for Stephen O'Brien. O'Brien looking to cut inside Jimmy Lehan. Oh, great score. Is Stephen O'Brien. O'Brien out the field to Shawnee around. Ooh, it's going to be Jimmy Lehan that's going to have the shot, I think. And the crowd in the stand will tell you that's good. That's over the bar. And asking the questions. Indeed, there. And James Darmody to. Uh, it's forward, sorry, should I say. It was John Mine and got that one back. And that's a great score in uh, Brendan O'Keefe, I think, was it? To pop it over the bar. Bit of effort in trying to get free from his marker. But here comes. Oh, and it's Moynihan. Save. Whistle gone. Oh, that could be controversial. It's a free out. Whistle was gone before the ball uh, was kicked. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what far. Was it off the ground? Uh, off, yeah, yeah, off the ground. But in truth, the referee wasn't close to it. He was a good bit away. It was very close to the bro- ground. Maybe it was the correct call. I don't know. The, 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 it was challenged, though. 
Um, the body language suggested that it wasn't off the ground. A significant decision there right at the, at the, um, the end of the half. Uh, to Jack. To Kevin O'Sullivan. Oh, but it's overturned. And it's Ratmore now. James Darmody looking for Collins. And this is Brian Freed, is it? Oh, no. goal! And that was badly needed. Yeah, Kieran Collins. Oh, it's Collins. Well, it's his first touch nearly, is it? Yeah. Very close. Yeah. Um, it was m- I expected through Freel here again. And Darmody down the field to John Moynihan. Moynihan lost his feet just for a second, but he's still there, you know. And it's a goal for Ratmore. Well, here we are. Took five minutes. And Ratmore have gone from five points down to two points up. And... Very often, one fella des- doesn't deserve it at all, and that's, you know, Sean Shea now. And that is, is it a score? It, it is. is a super score. Throw again, Dan Murphy at the ball. Dan Murphy, a great ball carrier. To his younger brother, Fionn. This is Kieran Collins dropping the ball in, and it's going to go all the way over the bar. Great score there. And it's uh, getting a bit lateral here now, but a little bit of an incisive run here. By Fionn Murphy, and that, in my eyes, is the score of the game so far. Into the Kinmere play now after that break and play. Badly needed, of course. Uh, as Stephen O'Brien looks to find the big man, and who else would it be? Only Sean Shea, who wins the ball. He's not greedy. He takes his point to make it 2 10. Or, sorry, the forwards as well at the backs. He's uh, he played a few games for Kerry at centre forward. Mining offloads it to Carl Ryan. Is that Moynihan? Or again, Andrew Moynihan. That's a penalty this time. Thing to do, but here's Moynihan with the penalty effort. Sin- Great break to the tackle there. Andrew, lovely skip and jump. He still has it, Andrew. To Chrissy Spears. Put it up, he says. Gives it to Fionn Murphy. No, it's Shane Ryan. Shane Ryan has Kieran Collins down to the right-hand side. Wide open, he gets it. Collins now. Collins takes his man on. He can just punch it over the bar, secure the win, and he does that. And that is a fantastic second half performance by Kieran Collins. He has scored, I think that's his third point, is it? And, and uh, it's enough to blow the full time whistle. And it's Ken, it's uh, Ratmore who take the win. And it's so there you had it. Uh, Kinmare Shamrock's bit of a storm ending to that one, but uh, Kinmare Shamrock's being caught there in the second half, having led in the first quarter. Um, and then uh, Ratmore getting crucial goals, and that man again, John Moynihan, uh, being on the score sheet twice. He got a goal from play, and he converted a penalty as well, John. So that's a good start for Ratmore, isn't it? That's an, outst- an outstanding start for Ratmore, especially when you consider Kenmare Shamrocks are, are the current runners up in this competition after losing the final last year to Dingle just by the bare minimum. And when you've when you have a day when Sean O'Shea scores 11 points, uh, including four from play, and you're the opposition and you still end up on the winning side, that's uh, an excellent start uh, for Ratmore. Like you say, John Moynihan, he's always had the goal touch. He banged in two uh, over the weekend. And young Kieran Collins came off the bench to exceedingly good effect, like a goal and two points. That was excellent. You all, you had Paul Murphy and Shane Ryan, of course, back in the mix for one side. Sean O'Shea, Stephen O'Brien. Stephen O'Brien started well, apparently, with a couple of nice points. Uh, set up another score in the, in the early stages. Ken Merrill did a lot of their good work uh, early on. But I suppose you also have to look more at uh, the four red cards as well. Both sides finished uh, 13 aside. Got a little bit messy down the home stretch but I suppose these things are, are always liable to happen in some matches uh, at least once every weekend uh, and maybe more often at times you know so yeah great start for Atmore puts Ken Mayer under um, savage pressure on Friday night going to Spa because Spa and Temple No will be happy with a draw you know like one point is better than no points so already Ken Mayer are, are up against it and they have to respond straight away on Friday night yeah, and Jimmy, um, good win uh, for uh, Ratmore. And I suppose you're looking at Kinmare. They're going to be travelling to Spa, to play Spa on Friday night. And they must simply win it. Yes, it's, it, it has an element of a winner-take-all game about it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say home advantage is big. I still think we might be down too many bodies. 
looking at Ken Mayer, um, the thing is, Ratmore were very good. Do you know? Um, yeah. You mentioned Andrew Moynihan last week. You were yeah. absolutely spot on. He, God, he'd drive him forward. I'd be getting out of his way. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, no, I, I really, I, I, I thought it was actually what about very Fionn good. Murphy? Fionn Murphy, again, outstanding. Thought, geez, he kicked one absolutely superstar point altogether. Mm-hmm. Uh, lovely fielder of a ball. He just the, he he is one to watch, you know, and definitely one to watch. Um, Ken Mayer, though, Ken Mayer will be hurt and they will be a bit disappointed, you know. Ratmore. How did Paul O'Connor play? By the way, more, I saw him wearing more fifteen again. What did he? Um, tried very hard. Ratmore defended very well. Um, Paul, very good customer to get on a ball, but I didn't. Um, the, 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 I mean, a thing for Ken Mayer is when you have a guy like Sean O'Shea, it's very hard not to depend on him. <laughs> but you needed a little bit more. I mean, we say Ratmore, no, I thought they might be depending on Shane Ryan. Shane Ryan was actually a great playmaker. Um, yeah. I'd say if you look at the amount of assists for scores that he gave, he, he was the guy giving the pass, making the move. Mm-hmm. Calling the player, and the brother was back at midfield. You know, Mark isn't he? Is it, uh, no, the other guy, Cahill. 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 Mark is injured, is he? Uh, um, yeah, but but uh, Cahill was there. Yeah, tell me now. We look at the weekend game. Spa and Kinmere. Obviously, I'm not going to ask you who you think is going to win because you want Spa to win. Um, uh, it's right. on live on Trevor, by the way. Right, right streaming now. live on Friday night. Who's going to win it? Right now, I would say probably Kinmere by about two points. It, 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 it's a numbers game. Yeah. You know, no, I think they might be down Kevin Sullivan. Yes. And Kevin Sullivan is an absolute dynamo yeah. in midfield um, that could make a difference. I, I Jimmy Lehan is a pretty good player on the half forward line for both picking up, breaking great ball. Battle, great back. And he, he walks back and he walks forward. So. Yeah, they have, they have a good chance. They're, they're, I'd good, say, they're a good, solid side. They're strong, they're fit, they go at you. It, it. But Spa must look at this as saying, uh, you know, um, we have a we have a point there on zero. So, look, let's kick on. And if Spa win it, then they want three points. The Ken Mayer can only make two in their final game. So they're in the semi-final. A hundred percent. And you're at home. I mean, yeah. the thing is, every team is going to be going for it anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. There, there, there isn't really such a thing as an added incentive because if you're not incentivized for the club championship, what are you doing? Like, yeah, true. You know, true. So yeah, absolute, Both sides will absolutely want oh, this. Have a go, John. Um, Spawn, Kinmere, quickly. Who do you think might be the best side there? Would home advantage swing it for Spawn? Will Kinmere? Kinmere had habit last year. Um, I remember the year before they had early problems. But then they came along, they reached the final last year, remember, and they were only beaten yeah. uh, by, by, by Dingle, wasn't it? I think Ken Mayer might just pull it out of the fire march, just yeah. for the simple fact that they have to... Thanks, John. Thanks. There, has Thanks. To be a, <laughs> there has to be a response to the defeat against uh, Rap Moore, you did know. and Spa in Spa last year? I swear they did. I'm sure they played Spa. They played a couple of games. They played no, in the we, 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 the we, we actually beat them. They beat Crokes last year. We beat them in the group stage and... Dingle absolutely hockeyed us in the semi That's final. right. Yeah. They yeah, probably need, that. Ken Mayer probably need, though, to get a, a little greater spread of scorers. Like Sean O'Shea, 11 out of 16 the last day. I know, as Jimmy says, like, you're always going to be dependent probably on your Kerry star, but at the same time, a few other players will have to step up. And if they do, I think they might just nick it, Ken Mayer. Temple No and Ratmore. Temple No are hard to beat at home down on that pitch. The most picturesque, one of the most picturesque pitches in the mm. country. Unbelievable! You can look out, and uh, I'm not going to go through the bays of the mountains because JC will correct me every time mm. I mention. So I leave it there. I just say it's alongside the water. Okay? Yeah, Patrick Clifford um, came on as a sub there for Temple No against a Spa. You would hope now that he's probably in a better position to get back into the starting lineup because he's an important player. Um, he did. He played well. Aidan Crowley now uh, just managed a point. There's definitely more scores than Aidan Crowley if he brings that the next day. Obviously, Killian Spillane played well, got a nice few scores. Tyg Marley, they had the goal scorers. 
Ratmore will be coming with savage confidence after uh, lowering Ken Mayer's colours. Like, they'll be cock-a-hoop going into the game. So, very difficult game to call, Mort. Um, I yeah. don't know, maybe with the home advantage, there, there might be a little, uh, little surprise on the cards. Maybe Temple Noah might just edge it. Yeah, they're hard to beat there, but I think Ratmore went down last year to Ken Mayer Shamrocks when they had to win um, a game and they won it. Uh, that was might have been in the county championship, but anyway, they won it. So look, um, I think uh, I would opt for Ratmore to win on the road, and um, I think the Spa Kinmere game would probably be another draw. I would have to incline towards Ratmore. I was very, very taken with Kieran Collins off the bench, and Chrissy Spears came on and did a bit. And again, the closer he gets back to action. Better, that, yeah. that guy is yeah, a serious threat. Yeah, you know? yeah. So for me, even as good as Temple Noir are, and they are very good, Ratmore, Rat, Ratmore just have a lot of aces. They have, yeah, it's, and their county league form without their senior, uh, their inter-county mean was pretty good as well. So now we're on to Group B, and our third game, we're going to look at the highlights of this. This happened to be a cracker, despite the fact that it was felt, and we were talking about it last week, that Milltown Castle Main would be far too strong for Nagale, mm-hmm. but that's not the way it turned out. Here, no Donovan Finch onto Dan Goggin. We'll know him by his hair. The ball is put in inside, but again, out come Milton Castamine. Beautiful chip up there, and a beautiful pass by Keir O'Connor inside. And that should be the opening point of the game from Jack Bork. Uh, number Gale. And the two number 10s are marking each other. Here comes Milton Castamine. That was John Thomas Sullivan dishing the ball off. Here comes, is that Gavin Horn? And uh, that's put over the bar. That's the number nine. There's a lot of quality in this uh, Nagale side. Here's Diamond again, bursting through the middle. Diamond O'Connor, is he going to take a pot at the post? He does. And that came inside the post and it's over the bar. Great score, but sends the ball back to his midfielder, Gavin Horn. And that's a free, I would say. Evan Horn, no, he's going to allow advantage go. Here's Horn, Gavin Horn. Gavin Horn is going to put it over the bar. That was too easy. Second point for, and this is Andrew Barry. Andrew Barry. Moves forward, moves with menace. Is there movement inside? He slips the ball quickly in. Here comes Dan Goggin. Dan Goggin will take his point, and he does. Great point by. And here comes uh, Stephen Roach. Stephen Roach, without his bicycle, he sends it across here. Inside, here comes Roach. This is the other Roach. Uh, David Roach. He passes it off to Aina O'Connor. And Aina will. That's wide. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's over the ball now. No, that's Dara Devine. Um, and uh, here with it now again comes oh the ball is out now to Finch this time Finch is getting married in September so he's other things to worry about that's Dara Devine that's a fine point uh, if it goes over yes it's the team meets number 20 again this time it's fair now he's really hobbling after that second hit here comes the full back this is Damien Buck Damien inside to the full forward uh, to, to the 11 that's Kieran O'Connor puts it over the and here comes Nagel now on the counter attack Damien Buck and oh Damien O'Connor he has it he's on the drive what can Damien do he sends it inside who's in there this is a great chance to a score and a point. Is that Jack Doyle? Uh, it's not. As he hits it high. And that's a good ball underneath it. There was Jonathan O'Sullivan, but I think it is that Ian O'Connor. Uh, it is Ian that's out there. And here is O'Sullivan. He's well capable of floating over a point. Oh, that's a beauty by uh, the uh, Jack Burke. Jack Burke has the beating of his man, Anthony Keller. Can he make that ball? He stops it in here from going over the inline. He has it. Has he got help on his shoulder? This is Jack Burke. Jack is exciting. Ball's across. Back into, tipped into Jack Burke. And Jack Burke puts it over the bar. What a score. Peter Doyle, I think, was involved in that. Uh, Damon's brother. Here comes Andrew Barry again. Can they get the lead score? Can they manufacture something? Ball now is being moved in. And that's the wing back. Jack, number seven, that is Jack. Down the middle, but they could also throw him inside full forward. Andrew Barry with the ball. Well, Andrew, he chips one inside. Oh, the ball breaks kindly for them. And it's put, oh, great save from Kieran O'Connor by the keeper. Collected again by Diamond O'Connor. What a ball over the top that won't make. Can he hit it on? Here's Goggin. Goggin up from the tip on there from Devine. Goggin is a man that'll try and find the net, surely. And he does, but it's saved again. Backers for Nagale right now. Um, and here we comes Diamond O'Connor. He's been the fulcrum. He's been the catalyst for everything good. And he gives it to Devine who puts it over. And Nagale, with 10 minutes left, go a point in front. 
um, and he was in charge of the mid carry uh, my under 21 team last year. Here's Moriarty with the ball. Will he kick the leveling point? I think he will. And it's gone over the bar. Yes. And O'Connor, he's been pretty good. High ball in here. What can happen? Can he claim a mark? He doesn't. Uh, this is uh, Dara Hogan. Dara quite came to get a point. The ball is on the deck now, but it down there is Brendan Casey. Brendan Casey flicks it inside, and here's Roach, David Roach, over the bar for the, the back. Uh, and here comes Roach again. Roach, David Roach, bounces the ball twice. It comes to Moriarty. Carl Moriarty will fancy his chances if he can get through again. Beautiful pass. Tessel is just back to Moriarty with the left peg, and he's going to put it over the bar, surely. And he does. Two brilliant points by a turnover here. Uh, they will have the freedom, a lot of acres in front of them. But Mitchell Castamain trying to get the winner here. Casey, beautiful ball here inside to Hogan. Hogan is quite capable of kicking a point and he does to say, yes, Dara Hogan. Hogan though at the other end of the field. I think he's telling him that he's got to score. He showed him to watch. I think he's telling him he has to score direct, I think. This is some pressure kick, 45 metres out, wind assisted. Is he going to tr- go with the outside of the boot here, Mert? Uh, this is an almost impossible angle. And he's put it over the bar. Oh. It's hit the post. But uh, it's over. Oh. Uh, it's over. Now, there you had it. And uh, a last minute winner there. In added time, actually. Uh, by uh, young Sean Hogan. Dara Hogan, sorry. Sean's brother. Uh, now, um, John, uh, we were at this game. And I think it was exciting. Um, there was some good passage of play by both sides, uh, no doubt about it. Milton Castamay were right there. Carl Marathi came good at the end, and they got the win. But I think, on the other hand, Gale, uh, having lost, you know, on duty in the warm up, and then, but like the Burks, etc., Jack Dial, and the O'Connors end, and Jim had really got involved, and you ended up with, if they had taken their goal scoring chances, I would say they probably would have uh, edged it. Yeah, a really good game of football. I think, it, I think it might have surprised a lot of people, the quality of the game, especially with Nigel were so depleted. You know, They were missing the eight members of the Abbey Dorney team who were, of course, in action on Clubber this coming Sunday in the county final. They obviously had Jack Barry away. They have Stefano Cunbar away. They have Devin Burns transferred. They have a few injuries. They have this, that and the other. And Milton Castlemaine were missing their, their young gun, uh, Killian Burke, as well. And he yeah. turned out to be a significant loss. And they, they, they wouldn't want to be without him uh, too long in this competition going He's forward. He's going to be missing for this weekend. Yeah, believe. but it yeah. was a really, really good match. Um, I think even Carl Moriarty possibly said it in his interview with us afterwards that probably a draw would have been the fairest result because um, I don't think either side deserved to lose. Um, Milton were 10-8 up, I think it was, at half time, having had the breeze. So Nigel dug in brilliantly. And then in the second half, like you say, Nigel had uh, the goal chances. I'm trying to think, was it Kieran O'Connor and uh, maybe Dan Goggin? They had the it goal was. chances. And yeah. Cormac Lean made a couple of smart saves in goal for Milton Castlemaine. And then even at the end, you know, Moriarty kicked some great scores. Uh, in the first half, Gavin Horn and Jonathan O'Sullivan kicked some fine scores. Jack Burke was excellent for... Um, he got injured. I think if yeah, he stayed on to it, might have made a difference. For Nigel. And yeah. I think was a big thing, Mert. I think maybe with 10 or 15 minutes to go, they might have switched par in. Milton might have switched par in onto Jack Burke. And he did a great job. And Jack then ended up getting injured as well and having to go off. So that was a huge blow to Nigel. But even after young Dara Hogan with a lovely score now set up by young Casey, Brendan Casey, great score. Nigel had a couple of chances for the equaliser and Dermot yeah. O'Connor did as much as humanly possible to try and get him over the line for the draw. Like he did. 40 meter effort very narrowly wide and then he took responsibility for a 45 meter free at the end and hit it with the outside of the boot off the post mm, like yeah. it really really did probably deserve to be a share of the spoils but I think I think both sides <laughs> will be in, encouraged by it like Nigel will feel obviously that if they had a full team that they probably would have won the game then Milton will think well if we had Killian Burke maybe we would have won easier yeah. so um yeah, there's plenty for both sides to be encouraged with going forward. Yeah, and you mentioned Parin there, and he'd be very uptight, not alone about the game this coming weekend when they take on the uh, Crokes here in this very pitch just uh, outside uh, this clubhouse. But Parin's girlfriend is the carry captain, Neve Carmody, who will be very, so he'll be in Crow Park on Sunday, very excited. 
Oh, you see the deep knowledge I have of, mm. of, of relationships and, 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 and... It's actually a little bit frightening. Okay, <laughs> right. So we'll ask you, Jimmy, um, were you surprised uh, that this was so close, uh, Milton and the game? I have to eat humble pie. I didn't. You don't like humble pie. I did not think that Nigel would be anywhere close to this in the finish. Yeah. As you said, they but they're not a club in decline, though, or a team in decline. They're, you know, they might be struggling in the league, but I think they showed the real heart when it comes to championship that they have and the resources they have to be missing so many players Absolutely. and still give a good account to themselves. Absolutely, but they they are a strong club anyway. What they do underage. You know, is very impressive. You look at their players, they're committed, they go out, they give it to every yeah. game. In this one, they had the, to know their Danny underdogs. Danny Kingston is coming up now, isn't he? Yeah. A fine player for them. And Vince Cooper's son. Yes, Liam, yes. Liam Cooper. Liam Cooper, he'll be something uh, else. But look, they're, they're only young, they will even be good. Yeah, yes. them, yeah. Do you know? Uh, but just on, on this one, I think Milton would be delighted to get out of that with a win. Nega- both sides will actually take a lot of confidence out of that game. Yeah. The thing is, both, <laughs> both teams are facing... Yeah, a, you, know, you, know, you look at the other two teams in yeah. the group and... They're facing a, we call it, uh, they're facing a train, an oncoming train. Uh, um, and uh, they'll have to be very careful because no, if they no, don't... Yeah. You're playing a hurt Crooks in Dr. Yeah. Crooks. Yes, and you're playing a... Have, have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, and you're playing with... You know, uh, you're like, playing, you're, you know, Nigel are going to Dingle, playing against a team who really cut loose and are, you know, obviously trying to going to try and build on that. Uh, we, we, well, we don't. Now, uh, that's fine. That's the first game. So that was played. This our third game. Discussing, but the first game of uh, Group B. Now for the classic, El Clasico, <laughs> one of the finest <laughs> games that we've seen uh, all year. Between Dingle and Dr. Crokes. Dr. Crokes unbeaten in the league, uh, 11. And could their unbeaten run, could they, could they extend it? Or would Dingle uh, gazump them? They did. So we'll watch the highlights now of this cracker. Was playing hurling with Kilmoyley in the past. Matthew Flaherty inside towards Banbury. Banbury's away from David Nocton. Bambury's clean through. Will he go for the point? Call Bambury. He will. He got away. For us all Ireland final. It's Armagh and Galway. But we'll concentrate on Crokes versus Dingle for now. Here's Dr. Crokes. That's Mark Fitzgerald on the overlap. In towards Michael Potts. Again, that's Mark Fitzgerald. A shot! A goal! Oh. What a wonderful goal! I think it's Mark Fitzgerald. Paul Ganey. Ganey's on the run now. Ganey. Lovely pop pass inside. This is a chance. It's Dylan, is it? Great save by Murphy. Smothered save. Oh, that's a good kick out. And played quickly to Paul Ganey. That's great work by Curran this time. Now Ganey's on the straight burst. He's gone past the 45. He's heading towards the 21. He's onto his left boot. And that's over the bar. That's how... Uh, they're tenacious at the back and they're winning the midfield battle. Here's Mark Fitzgerald and Evan Looney. Evan Looney's pass is intercepted there by Cahal Bambury. Cahal Bambury to Conor Ganey. Playing across goal, Paul Ganey! Back of the net, Paul Ganey! All was ever ready for the Paul Bambury with the interception. Bambury played it to Conor Ganey. Conor Ganey to Dylan. Dylan didn't even catch it. Just flicked it across to Paul Ganey. Paul Ganey palms it past Shane Murphy. Mistake at the bar to Dylan Ganey. Dylan Ganey does great movement inside from Conor Ganey. Dylan sends it into Conor. Conor pops it off to Paul. This is a chance for another score. This is a brilliant score. Excellent work, by Especially in that last five minutes. Took the game by the scruff of the neck. Here's Dingle on the early attack. Ball played in towards Conor Ganey. Conor Ganey punches it down. Dingle, chance. Back to Conor Ganey. He'll try with the left foot. He does try with the left foot. That's Conor Ganey. Challenge. They can't score it in points, obviously. Here's Tony Brosnan on the burst to Gavin White. Gavin White now charging through. That's the Gavin White we know and love. To Evan Looney. Looney, left, popped, left-footed. Over to Tyg De Bruyne. To Barry O'Sullivan. Here's Barry on the burst. Barry will try a score from a tight angle. Will it drift across? It's caught by Paul Ganey inside. It's off the post. It's saved. It's hit the crossbar. That could be the escape. That, that was Dr. a miraculous Crokes. escape. That could be what Dr. Crokes are looking for. Especially if they come down and get a score at the other end. That's O'Leary into McMahon. McMahon, opportunistic effort. Opportunistic score. Oh, by Keane McConnor to Tom O'Sullivan. Look where Tom is. 
Tom, he's going to take on Mark O'Shea. Mark O'Shea, got to be ready for the left footer. Tom lays it off to Matthew Flaherty. This could be a special effort by Flaherty. Oh, it's a wonder. Lays it inside, gets the return pass. Brosnan. Dr. Crokes trailing by four points. 112 to 18. Here's McMahon. He got a beauty earlier. He goes for another one. Does Keane McMahon. And over off the post. Great. Uh, yeah, so Keane, excellent player. Here comes Dingle again. Oh, long ball in towards the thing, towards Matthew Flaherty. Flaherty's under pressure from Evan Looney. What'll Flaherty do? Pops it off to Conor Ganey. Conor Ganey's gone in through a gap towards Dylan Ganey. It's in the back of the net. Matthew Flaherty to Conor Ganey to Dylan Ganey. This dingle, the, fa- the attack is absolutely on fire. Crokes had a lucky escape a while ago. They didn't escape this time. Dylan Ganey with the flick into the back of the net. That's wonderful attacking play, Mark Murphy. Tom Doyle, lovely cross-field pass. That's towards Charlie Keating. Keating will have to go for goal now. He'll have to take on Tom Leo. He'll have to keep going. Keating, what does he do? Does he punch it over the bar? Yes, he does. Does Char- uh, 80% to Tom is good enough and two great points. Here we Marco go. Marco Shea, big high one. Brilliant catch by Gavin Corn Drops penalty. it. Is it a penalty? Corn went up high, dropped it. Is it a no, penalty? Kieran O'Leary's look. Kill. If that's not a penalty, what is? How is it his umpires didn't see it? Here's Dr. Crokes with the turnover. Ref's going to play advantage here. Paul Clark lays it off to Tony Brazza. Tony Brazza, pop. Shot. Goal. What a wonderful effort. It is O'Leary. It is the old veteran. What a finish by Kieran O'Leary. Crokes with the turnover. Paul Clark to Tony Brosnan. Tony Brosnan popped it. O'Leary went for the juggler. It's a wonderful effort. It's gone into the top corner of the net. What a goal, Mark. Kieran O'Leary, you cannot beat class now. Nearly 61 minutes gone. Corrin sends it out oh, high. Push in the back there. Breaks it. Here's push Tom it. Sullivan. Tom Sullivan to Paul Ganey. And Tom goes again. He's gone again. He's calling for it. This could seal it. Paul Ganey, Tom Sullivan. What will he do? He's fouled. He is fouled. Is it a penalty? Or is it a free? Ganey versus Brian O'Shea. Ganey, bang. Push the keeper the wrong way. That seals a stunning performance. I don't know what's going on. Frozen with a free anyway for Dr. Goff. He's going to lob it in around the square. And Can there's, a, look, there's a man down off? already. Who's yeah. going to get there? Mark O'Shea it's was It's a down. dingle man. It's dingle are going to get over. it. It's in the hands of Darrow Sullivan. He's the man who picks up the ball at the end. And there you had it. What a game and what a contest. I mean, five goals and 36 scores. And Paul Ganey given uh, a game of the age back like from Kerry and a disappointment as he told John after in an interview, you know, he decided he'd come in training, grab the bag, he didn't hide it anywhere and he didn't hide certainly in this game. It really was a thriller and as he said afterwards, it's one of these games that he was hoping he could play in again and it was thoroughly entertaining, everybody that saw it. And when you contrast it with some of the inter-county stuff we've been watching and the negativity, this was man against man, you know, and really back and front. And in fairness to Seamus Muller, the referee, he contributed to it because he left the game flow and he didn't blow the whistle regularly. Um, and I think that was good for the game as well. John, you, I'd say, thoroughly enjoyed that class of a game because you'd never see that in North Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, probably true, <laughs> to be fair. But uh, no, being, being present at a game like that on uh, last Saturday night uh, made you uh, understand as a youngster why you decided that you loved Gaelic football yeah, because um, absolutely. that's the type of game that would get people talking it would get people through the turnstiles it gets people involved it gets people excited it was pure football like it, people can say all they want about tactics this that and the other but you just have to contrast it with the All-Ireland final the following day and I know it's a higher standard inter-county level but it's pretty obvious which was more exciting and which was as dull as dishwater to watch. Mm-hmm. And, and if, if they want, if they want people to keep following the game and, and get new supporters down the next five, ten, fifteen, twenty years, because especially youngsters these days, they have small attention spans. They're not going to sit watching a tactical uh, battle of Gaelic football defenses for seventy-five, eighty minutes. They're going, they're going to want to see those five goals, penalties. Uh, interesting situations 36 scores end-to-end mm. stuff because that's what the game is all about and i have to say dingle and especially uh paul ganey gave an ex- absolute exhibition of everything that's you're good about the looking game. for free lunch in ganey's pub are you again no 
No, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll get back to you in a bit of analysis. Jimmy, you're a connoisseur of very little, but you I, are a connoisseur <laughs> of good football. Again, so, that word might not mean what you think it means. Yes. I agree with everything John has said there. That's and strange I'll for ju- you. I'll just add, if there was a wounded seagull on that pitch, he'd have been trampled. Okay, yeah. fast, furious play. Loved it. I thought you were a lover of seagulls. Had had it had the whiff of sulphur about it as well. Yeah. Um, but I I do think the better team won. I thought it was two great teams. I thought the goals by Dingle. Um, Again, especially that first goal. I mean, it's a tight space. Crocs have men back. They're watching it. Zip, zip, zip. Four passes. That that was like handball or something. It was yeah. just instant. And they all knew. To, they knew exactly where each other was. They knew what the option was. They knew yeah. where they were putting the ball before it came to them. That's just fantastic. The, the level of coordination, the training, yeah. the playing intelligence. You can't stop that. It's a gainy you know? thing, though. It's the DNA in that family, I mean, the two brothers are obviously Connor and Dylan, the 13 and the 14, mm. and Paul was in the 11, he's the father, well, he's not the father, but he's the father figure, uh, the boys are about 10 years younger than them or whatever, uh, maybe a bit more, but, I mean, in fairness, the understanding between them, and Matthew Flaherty was involved, and then Tom mm. Sullivan went up, and he started playing as an extra full forward, and he started putting over points. And then you'd Barry Dan at midfield and the brother Dara. It was incredible. And a man who had a great game um, was, was, was the other Tom, Tom Leo. Yeah, he was really going absolutely. at stature. But the thing is, you have to say, Crooks, Dingle were the better side. How many teams out there could have given them a game like that? Yes. I mean, Crooks actually, uh, Ragmore are the only other team to outscore them Yes. You, you look at their, their actual scoring totals. Like, I mean, I know. Yeah. They had two fourteen, and they'll consider it a bad day for them. Yeah. And John, Crooks, like defensively, they weren't as you know tight as they normally are. Um, midfield didn't go as well as it should. You'd imagine with Marco Shea out there. Then the half forward line seemed to get lost between two. You know, there was no link play. There was no one. That's where I think Gavin O'Shea, who I presume is, is still out injured and he's down, I think it's number 29 or 30 or whatever on the, on the squad. But I remember the last couple of years, the man, like he, Gavin mightn't score a lot, right? Great but playmaker, he, great the busy. playmaker, like Kieran did in the second half, Kieran O'Leary, they need somebody to link up with the class forwards. Keen McMahon, fabulous game. Uh, Tony Brosnan, he took forwards for the ball, but he did okay. Um, but you'd be setting, you know, the likes of Tom Dyle and Charlie to do a lot more, David Shaw. So, I mean, they have the personnel. Do you think that Pat, probably in the words of the late and great Wishy Fogarty, has given them down the banks during the week? And maybe... Milton Casamain will feel the backlash on Saturday evening. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in the in the Dr. Mm-hmm. Croak's uh, managerial debrief no. uh, after Saturday night because I'd say the fly was dead <laughs> at the minute Pat from, got into uh, the room. From Pat O'Shea's point of view, uh, conceding three goals and seventeen points is unacceptable. Like we know the standards yeah. that Pat O'Shea has. We know the standards of Dr. Croak's as a club. That's unacceptable for mm-hmm. them, no matter who the opposition is. They were torn asunder by the three gainies. Like, to be fair, Paul, Connor, and Dylan. And you can say that the lads are capable of doing that to any team in the county, which they are, but this isn't good enough for Dr. Crokes. Like, I would say the likes of Mikey Lynch, John Payne, Neil O'Shea, these are backs now that in training this week, they'll be saying to themselves, there's a great chance for us here to be called into the lineup for the weekend because. That wasn't that, that wasn't good enough from a Dr. Crocs team. Gavin White definitely didn't look fully fit. And remember, Dr. Crocs got off to a brilliant start with that fantastic yeah, ball by Mark ball, Fitzgerald after yeah, only yeah. five or six minutes. Like he charged up the field, played you a one two. Right, fair play, played, yeah. played a one two with Michael Potts and put it into the roof of the net. Like that was that was the start to be dreamed of against the breeze for Dr. Crocs. And even coming up to half time, Dr. Crocs were level terms. Entering yeah. the last five minutes of the first half, they would have been really happy. But then came that first mm. dingle goal. Like basically, Paul Ganey took the game by the scruff of the neck. 
Like, there's huge improvement in Dr. Crooks. Like you say, Gavin O'Shea, Brian Looney, Michal Burns, obviously. They were big losses. Like, Crooks do have a massive panel. I'd say Michal might be back with the semi-final yeah. if they do make that. Crooks do have a yeah. massive panel of players. But I think it will have given Pat O'Shea and his selectors huge food for thought the last night. And it's whether Pat says, well, this is my first choice team. I'm going to give them a clean slate. I'm going to give them a second chance to go in again and rectify what went wrong. Or he could just change three, four, five positions easily. Do you know Pat O'Shea well? Do you think Pat O'Shea is forgiving? I think there will be changes. Yeah, I think that's a very diplomatic way. John, you might get an interview from Pat sometime if you stay at the pros. It might sound Pat or like that. But I wouldn't attempt to pick a team for Pat O'Shea. Uh, anyhow, there was, I suppose, and when you look at it, uh, Jimmy, there was only um, six points in it at the end. They could have got a penalty, um, Crokes, and they conceded a penalty, which may or may not. We had the benefit of replays. Obviously, the referee doesn't have that, but it looked to be the foul just outside. And that's a six-point swing. Now, at the same time, I think they deserve to win it. But they were unlucky with a few decisions. I have to say the penalty call isn't... Seamus is an outstanding referee. But I have no doubt he'll hold his hands up on that one himself. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah. he's a good eye for the game, hasn't he? percent yeah. a penalty. If they got a goal at that stage, nee. the other one, I, I have to say on first viewing, I said yeah. to myself, that's a penalty. Yeah. No, fair enough. When, when you showed the replay and you called it, and said it's just, it is just outside. Yeah. If I was the referee and... God help any team, I'd be, I'd be lynched long Jim, ago. Jim, you will never make a referee. But at the same time, if I was a referee, I, I, I'd have been giving the penalty for the second one, so I can kind of forgive that. And I yeah. think yeah. It, was, it, was, it was going to be a free from a point anyway. I think, yeah. I think Dingle kind of had the game at that stage, so that one and wasn't You're talking just there about Dr. Croke's changes, Martin. We're speculating what they might do at the back and in midfield. I think you can be pretty clear, Kieran O'Leary has to start... Uh, in the forward line, he made a huge impression after he's coming on. He's a veteran performer, though. He's about 37, isn't he? Like, he was fouled for that probable penalty for Dr. Crooks. He scored a brilliant goal into the top corner. He was one of the key figures in the second half for Dr. Crooks. So they're, they're, they're still a better team when Kieran O'Leary is yeah. starting. But to sum up, wasn't it refreshing, you know, and we repeat ourselves really, yeah. to watch a game like that, considering the rubbish we've been watching at an county level, all through the group stages and the the, the senior championship, the intercounty scene, and to come and see game like that, similar to that hurling game between Ballyduff and Kilmiley, there's something you were you 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 were just you watched every minute of it. You didn't know really which way it's want to swing, and the excellence of the Dylan Gainies, the Paul Gainies, you know, and on the other side, you know, the 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 Crokes boys, the Keen McMahon kicking points for fun, like. There was so much talent on that pitch. It really was refreshing. Yeah, and, uh, we, we spoke there about uh, players who Jack might uh, keep an eye on over the next uh, couple of months. I'd, I'd definitely add in Connor Flannery there, the mm. Dingle defender. I was very impressed by him last year. I thought he was excellent all the way through the club championship and the county championship last year. Former Kerry Minor. I feel he has He's a, a lot. He has a yeah. lot of potential yeah. to go for. You wouldn't want to meet him down a dark alley on a, a wet night, would you? No, I think he's a really good man-on-man uh, defender. Good on the ball as well. Um, yeah, great potential. Right, I'm going to stick you now for Crokes hmm. and Milton Castle, Maine. Both of on on Saturday evening at 7. We'd like 7.15 if anybody's watching this in authority, either in Absolutely. Dr. Crokes or Milton Castle, Maine. Um, our the Legion as well are playing Nimi Gula in the Intermediate Championship. We'll be getting on to that uh, shortly. And uh, both games are on in Killarney. But because the Fossa game has been changed from 4 to 5.30, it's caused a problem for us to try and get commentary teams. And and if you want to see, everybody wants to see Fossa and the Cliffords, I presume. Um, and they want to see the Croaks as well. And they want to see the Legion in Nimi Gula and East Kerry Derby of derbies and I'd say I know the side you'll be on in that one Jimmy but anyway uh, we need uh, one of those games to change to 7.15 so if anybody's watching this on YouTube or Club or the Kerry GA TV channel uh, tomorrow or the day after just please one of you show us a bit of mercy John O'Dowd follows Formula 1 but he doesn't want to be caught speeding through Fossa at 10 to 7 to try and make the Legion pitch for 7 o'clock through traffic 
And obviously we know without criticising Killarney because I love the town, traffic in Killarney is pretty poor at the moment, particularly on a bank holiday weekend. So please, that's a plea from the heart. Now, having given that message uh, to somebody to show us a bit of mercy, Jimmy, uh, call these two, Dr. Crokes and Milton Castlemaine, in one word, two words. Well, the first one is doctor. Right. All oh, right, Dr. Javago. I no, I think uh, I heard you, you were a, I respect, you went to opera. I stuff. respect Milton. Yeah. But you're taking out their county player. Yeah. And you're playing against a wounded Crokes. A wounded Crokes at home with a point to prove. Yeah. And needing, absolutely having to win. Did you? Yeah. I. You fear for I, Milton. I, I can't see them staying with Crokes. Right. I think Crokes will be hurt. Yeah. Forget the decisions, everything like that. Yeah. They lost, they were beaten, they have a point to prove. John, uh, would you go along with that, Crokes? Yeah, 100%. Dr. Crokes to win and the same Dingle to win at home against Nigel. As and well. about Dingle and Nigel? Nigel surprised me, hugely yeah. impressed by them. Fair play and full credit. But Dingle down and Dingle? Yeah. You saw what they did to Crokes. I, I, yeah. How, how do you stop that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Dr. Crokes for me as well, and the girl to cause a surprise in Dingle. I'll rephrase that, Dingle to win and beat <laughs> the girl. Uh, but I had to say that, and uh, the lads... You're going against your own club. Yeah, I have to go, yeah. Jordan would, uh, would kill me, the infamous Jordan Murphy. Anyway, that is the senior Group A and Group B, and wins at the weekend, uh, you know, depending how those results will go, uh, we'll have a very interesting final round of that the following weekend. So that's a wrap of the Senior uh, Club Championship. And we'll be back shortly with a roundup of the Intermediate Championship. Now back with the Kerry Petroleum Intermediate Football Championship. And lads, this is one of the toughest championships, I think, to win, even tougher than the senior one, oh, so, so. Uh, because there are so many. Now, the hot favourites, of course, are Austin Stacks and the Group A results. John, John Mitchell's not nine, Austin Stacks 215. And then we had Glenn Dencar winning in Kiel against Ungeltup. Very late win there by them. 2-9 to not 11. And uh, they were level with uh, just minutes to go. Uh, but Caelan Tien with a goal and a point late on got uh, Klimbeck and Carr over the line. John, I suppose as expected, um, stacks with, you know, Armin Heinrich back, Joe O'Connor back, Dylan Casey back, um, Jack O'Shea playing well, who had been in with the Kerry team, Paddy Lane getting four or five points, whatever he got. You know, they had they introduced Daniel Kirby, I think, in the second half. They have a lot of talent in that club and often it is you know, what's the best starting 15? But, you know, they were too strong for Mitchells, who tried hard, but not able to match the stacks. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me about uh, this result, and it's, it was an expected result, because Austin Stacks were, are like, they are the favourites for the competition. Yeah. They are expected to go through the group stages, go through the knockout stages and lift the trophy at the end of it. But the biggest thing for me was the five subs that came on. If you just look at them there, like you've got Jack Morgan, Daniel Kirby, Michael O'Donnell, Feet Namangan and Shane O'Callaghan. That's the five subs that they brought on. That's not yeah. even counting some of the subs that they didn't introduce the last day. Yeah. That shows the absolute uh, strength in depth that the Rock Street uh, side possess. It's, it's like, like we said it last week, like they're one of the, the most promising conveyor belts of young talent. They, their miners ripped Lawn Rangers apart there on Monday night to win the, the county club championship as well. They've just, um, They've, they're just fantastic at the moment. The, yeah, the players the, that are coming through the ranks, um, they're building a stronger team. Great to see Paddy Lane stepping up straight away there yeah. with five points, you know, on, yeah. on his uh, county intermediate uh, championship debut. Joe O'Connor getting a goal. Keen Purcell has been scoring goals during the county league, playing very well as well. You would all the lads back, uh, Heinrich, Nagel. Dylan Casey, Jack O'Shea got two points, I think, from fullback. He did, yeah. Um, they're very strong. John Mitchells were as gamey as you'd expect, and like it's a three derby, so they were they weren't going to roll over yeah. and have their belly tickled, you know. But it was they were yeah. never going to be able to compete with like a full strength uh, Austin Stacks. Fantastic win for Glen and Carr as well. It has to be said. Yeah, uh, they have a good side. Uh, Gavin O'Grady, I'm too sure he's still playing, 
but his injury, uh, Darren should be around for the next game anyway. I'm not sure he played last weekend. Yeah, but I think he got three he points. He got three Darren points. Sullivan, yeah. And, and pa- 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 Kilkenny is still motoring. And then you have Quaylen Tien, who's ec- excellent. And they have a guy, Smith, uh, at midfield, Liam Smith. Mm-hmm. I've seen him play basketball more than... Oh, he's a powerful man. So overall, Jimmy um, Stacks, I suppose nice to see them introducing the likes of from the under-20 team and the Mount Hawk team, Michael Tensley, uh, Paddy Lane starting, and then Daniel Kirby coming on. It's good to see that the young lads are being trusted. It is. No, I mean, when you mentioned the subs, I mean, I've argued that Michael O'Donnell and Shane O'Callaghan were two of their key players last year. Yeah. And I think it shows the difference in numbers and player availability yeah. from last year to this year. I keep making the point they only lost the semi final on penalties to Fossa last year. And this is a much, much stronger stacks team with the likes of Paddy Lane and Daniel Kirby and these yeah. adding to the mix. As, yeah. as well as the players back and the county lads and so on. Um, I, we all said Stacks were favourites at the start of this. I think this only confirms that the other one is kind of more crucial for me. I think that will turn out to have been a winner-take-all game. I think that Glenby winning that, um, even with that late Caelan T and goal, to kind of seal the win. It was a much tighter game than that. There wasn't, yeah. It, yeah. There wasn't four points between them over no, the hour, no, if you know what no, I mean. No. Um, but I think with that win under them, I think that's what will put Glenby through in second place in the group. No, it's still all to play for. I could yeah. and often am. I've been wrong, like, but... Yeah, no, very rarely, For, yeah. for me, fact, that's it. That's yeah. a, that, now, that was the one, the winner of that one. Now, John, if you're looking at the fixtures this weekend, you're looking at John Mitchell's at home to Glenbegling Carr. You'd have to fancy Glenbegling Carr, wouldn't you? Yeah, without a doubt. Like, like Jimmy did say, I think even last week, like it was kind of a winner-takes-all game between Glenbeg and Carr mm, and Gale yeah, to finish like runners-up behind Austin yeah, Stacks, yeah. or what we expect to be runners up behind Austin Sachs. Stacks. Stacks um, are got playing Gale Tuck. Stacks and Gale Tuck, you'd have to back Stacks at home. But I just I just like to mention I think one of the feel good stories of last weekend, even though on Gale Tuck um finished on the losing side in that game, was the return of Rory O'Bwegliok because oh, um, um, yes. to do your cruciate ligament uh, once as a young player is terrible misfortune. But to just come back and for it to go again on the second occasion and put you out for another year. He's basically missed um, two full years of football. He was a Kerry minor. He was a Kerry under 20, uh, one of the most exciting young forwards coming up in the county. He's had his career derailed by serious injury for two years. And it's just, um, it's just brilliant news to see him back on the pitch. I think he got a score or two at the weekend as well so it'll be great to see his progress and yeah. please God now he gets a, a clean bill of health for the next couple of months and years and uh, can carve out that uh, exciting forward career because it, it will be vital for Angeltuk to have him but more importantly yeah. it'll be just uh, vital for himself to be That's back on the well pitch said. Very well said yeah and if the results go the way we think they will at the weekend it sets up a top of the table clash in Glimba uh, my former club, Glimbe. <laughs> um, and it will be Uncle, uh, sorry, it'll be Glimbe Glencar versus Stax. And that will be, and you know something I was thinking, I go back and clubber and commentate for that, and suddenly it dawned on me, Joe O'Connor, former Glimbe, great full forward. Um, that's in his own opinion. Mm. A lot of us would disagree. <laughs> and and Shawnee Barton, they will claim that one. So that'll be on clubber and the Stax. Ungail the game is on Clubber this weekend, so don't forget those Clubber passes. You can see all these games, and like Jimmy, you can instead of watching the Olympics, you can spend a week watching the games back. And that's exactly yes. what you've done. It just shows how professional you are for your research, and still you, don't, you know very little. Now, <laughs> moving on to Group B. It shows how good the games are. Exactly. Well, that's it, yeah. Group B. I apologize if I insulted hmm. you in any way. Uh, group B. <laughs> And then in Group B, we had two very good games. Tight, the Friday night one that opened the championship. Kansas Rallies, 2-9. Long Range is th- now 13. And I got a clip from JC, without his permission. I got a clip from <laughs> JC of uh, the Barry John Keane goal. 
and I got something like 70,000 views, really, and, and uh, the Tommy Walsh one to Tom Hall as well. They were two very good goals, but they only came good late on. Long range, as I said, be kicking themselves. And then Listol and Kilcummon. Kilcummon had to come late there. They were level for long periods. And Paul O'Shea, I think, got the last three points. That's right. And, uh, yeah, made a huge uh, difference to them, and they got over the line. So two big results there for a very, very tough group where there are four teams and any two could get to the final. But it sets up nicely now this weekend. Anyway, yeah, talk I about... In, yeah. I was in Nossensack Park on Friday night for the first game of the whole championship. Cairns or Ahley's Lawn Rangers really enjoyed it. Um, Lawn Rangers will be fuming. Like They had something like uh, 11 wides. They missed two or three goal chances. They were well on top in the first half. But they just didn't build up a, a big enough lead. And they never managed to pull away from Cairns or Ahley's. And then in the second half... The two goals were fantastic, both brilliantly created by Tommy Welsh. Like he still, he still has it when he has the ball in his grasp. Absolutely. His mobility might not be the same as it's been in the past, as you would expect for a man who's now 36 years of age, himself and David Moore. They both were hugely influential, as was Barry John Keane, a brilliant finish. Tom Hoare's runs from deep were a huge part of the... And he was nearly of, the, yeah, of, the, of the Cairns O'Reilly's armoury. When he, when he sets off on a run, he's very hard to track... And the substitute, the super sub, we actually didn't recognise him when he came on first because he's a shaved head now. Uh, Karma Coffee was absolutely outstanding for Karen Zarahal. He's kicked uh, two points. Lawn Rangers were too dependent on Owen Hassett uh, for scores. He got five of their points. He was very, very sharp. Um, How did they do the first half? Did Ono's, they miss a lot of goal chances? They did. They missed, they missed goal chances, Lawn Rangers. Um, and, and they missed a lot of point chances as well. Like They, they could easily have been out of sight uh, by half time, but they kept uh, Karen Zarahli's in it. And, and, and I always felt that there was going to be a sting in the tail from the Strand Road men. Like, there was too many people writing them off after their relegation from the senior ranks. They're a proud club. They still have players like... You know, if, if David Moran and Tommy Welsh and Barry John Keane didn't see any future in the team this year, they wouldn't be playing. Yeah. So the reason that they decided to keep going was a sure sign that, that there's something there. And they were missing Darrell Connor, who's injured. They were missing Connor Hayes, I think, is in America at the moment. And uh, got to mention young Tomas Kennedy. We've mentioned him a lot on our clubber coverage yeah. this year between the Kerry Under-20s and the County Under-20 Championship. He was really good again the last day. And it was actually at the very end when Cairns Rallies had a one-point lead. It was down to the last kick-out. And they aimed for David Moore, and I think went over David. Out of nowhere came Kennedy with a catch. And straight away turned towards goal and set up the insurance point uh, for Barry John Key. And so he's a very promising player. But uh, Lawn Rangers will definitely rue all their misses. They will, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, just briefly on that one, and then your own neighbours, like Kilcummon, who you'd like quite a lot and know a lot about mm. them, they uh, beat Listowel, and that was a tight enough game, as we said. Very so just, tight. Yeah. What were you thinking on that one? No, with the Rallys Long Rangers game, definitely I thought Long Rangers kind of left it after them. I, I had them up there among the favourites of the competition. I'd be questioning them after that, and I think they'll be questioning themselves that Rahalis earned their win, but I thought Long Rangers were trying to do a bit too much. They were giving that extra pass sometimes. They could have been a bit more direct, a bit more ruthless. As you said, they were looking all the time for Owen Hassett. I was very impressed with Rahalis' keeper, Robert O'Connor, by the way. He can take a lot of credit for the win as well. Yeah. Um, on the other one, again, I thought a really good game of football. I thought Kilcommon would have a bit too much in hand for Listowel, but in actual fact, there was nothing between them. As you say, Paul O'Connor with that last, or Paul O'Shea with those last couple of points to take them through. And it's great to see Paul back in action as well and back to himself. Um, Kilcommon, as I say, last year they gave Milton Castlemaine quite possibly the hardest game they had in the entire championship. Absolutely. Um, My son John were inside in a truck in the middle of the field <laughs> and rain pouring down on top of us, and you were in front of us supplying <laughs> us with the facts. Um, so, they, you know, again, this is a very big win for them. This means that they have everything to go for and they're going to go for us. Um, a tough one on the stall, but again, 
they, their year is their championship isn't over either. No, you know? no, it's, and that brings me. We'll have to do a quick uh, because we've only to, we've only five minutes on each of the other two groups left. Um, Long Rangers and Kilcommon on Sunday, one o'clock. Big game for Long Rangers. Who's going to win that? Oh, massive. This is the real test now of the Clargan men. This will decide what they're made of in this championship. I expect a response. I expect Liam Hassett to get a response. I think Lawn Rangers might win this one. You don't like Kilcommon, do you? Um, <laughs> and what about Kenz O'Reilly's and Listol? You again, don't like Listol either. Again, that's, that's going to be closer than a lot of people expect. I said Listol will take a scalp in this championship. Um, I'm going to leave that though for the following week. Uh, I think Karen's rallies can win. Right. Jimmy, Lone Rangers and Kilcommon, in one word. I hate saying it, but a draw. A draw. A draw. I, I, can see it. I can genuinely see it being a draw. A draw. Karen's rallies and Listol. You'd have to say rallies are going to come out of that game. And Lone Rangers with huge confidence now. A win like that, I, I actually think now that they have gone... Yeah. straight into real genuine contenders for the title yeah. itself. Well, Cairns O'Reilly's and Kilcommon, if both of them win, right, mm. that's game over. Uh, they'll qualify in Rangers and Listowel are gone. That's the way it works out. That's Three games, they'll have four points. Think, the others can only get uh, Kil- to two. Kilcommon and Lone Rangers. I mean, if you asked me last week, I'd have absolutely said, I, I think Lone Rangers with a bit to spare. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Not so I, much I, now. Yeah. yeah. Do you, I, you I, still I, go for long range at home advantage? With Sean, Sean O'Leary is back to his best as well with Kilcommon, and that helps. I, is I, that the ladders involved in the crash? Too, is, yeah. 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 I think Long Rangers would need at least one and possibly two goals. Um, I can see both sides getting a goal, yeah. and I, 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 I can see a draw. I, I think that Long Rangers could win this, right? Because yeah. Aidan Clifford is on holidays, their chairman and PRO. And it's commentator good. with Clubber. And because sure he's away, he's back. they're going to know he's going to watch it in Clubber. <laughs> so uh, we are actually going to run. Uh, when it's coming to the end of the game and it's tight, we're going to go blank and let him, <laughs> let him stew. And, and it, can only, it can only be seen in the Republic of Ireland. <laughs> um, moving on to Group C, we had big guns here. We had uh, Beaufort and Fossa having a great game. Beaufort won that. Uh, by a point, uh, not 14 to 110, I think, Paddy Clifford. Instrumental there, John, in the faster fight back. And then Bally Donohue and Castle Island Desmond. That was very tight until late on again. Mm. And I think it was a Thomas Hickey goal this time yeah. Yeah. that really decided that. Just a quick uh, summary of, the, of those games. Yeah, uh, Beaufort, like, they, they built up a big lead in the first half. And I, I suppose they ended up hanging on for dear life. And Kieran Kennedy managed to get the winner at the end, yeah. Paddy Clifford inspired the, the Fossa fight back. I think Beaufort will be satisfied still to have got over the line, though. Any time you beat Fossa now is a big win, especially when the two Clifford brothers are playing. Um, I think what will please them the most is like <coughs> Beaufort are not really dependent on any individual forward. They have a lot of players who step up to the plate. Kieran Kendy, Dara O'Connor, Jack O'Connor, Liam Carey. Um, it's a pity um, Kieran Dennehy is still on the injured list at the moment because he's one of the most promising young players in the county as well as being bedeviled by hamstring injuries. So hopefully we see him at some stage of the championship. The other game was like a, a real North Kerry championship affair. Desmond's pipping. Jason Foley getting two goals for Bally who is was wow. like a fantastic return from the, the Kerry fullback. Uh, but uh, Thomas Hickey, again, another player who's had a load of, his injury, a load of yeah. injuries too much. Uh, big win for Desmond's because um, that game was probably going to decide the prospects of either side in this competition. And Jimmy, looking forward now, Beaufort and Bally Donohoe, you'd imagine home advantage should suit uh, give Bally, Beaufort I, there I, to win. I think Beaufort, uh, you mentioned likes of Darrow, Connor and these, I, I think Jack O'Connor. They, they, yeah. they have a great blend of experience, firepower, Rowan and Murphy, yeah. absolutely fearless. And they haven't did any he's back yet, remember? Lee Carey is still there, Sean Coffey. Even allowing Farris I'm, I'm Beaufort to win. This Beaufort beating Fossa, I think I think for a lot of people who might not follow Kerry football that much, you know, Paddy and David Clifford are among the most famous footballers in the country at the moment. It might sound strange that they'd be beaten by Beaufort. 
I don't think it's that huge a shock to anyone here. I know, what, they what were odds on Beaufort were to beat, um, yeah. to beat uh, Foss, actually. What is a shock is, for me, for 40 minutes, they, they used to joke about Mayo forwards being so poor that you'd want them, you know, for the firing squad if you were facing them. Yeah. Fossa for 40 minutes. Oh, my God, lad. Put on blindfolds before you kick it and you have a better chance of putting it over the bar. They were left chance after chance after chance after chance behind them. Do you- Which Fossa is the real Fossa? And I yeah. think they've done enough to prove that that first 40 minutes was an anomaly. They're better than that. They're way, and way better. Do you think they'll do that? They'll improve and win against Desmond at home? Go back to the game against Desmond's last year. How many yeah. goals were there in that game? Was it, oh, it was, was, was it nine goals in total or something? It was. It was they went to added time and everything. It and was phenomenal. Lord and mercy and Jordy Murphy. He was all over the place that day. I, it was brilliant. I, I could see the same kind of game again. I, I think that will be another one. Yeah. Um, where any old season you want to be, on the pitch will have to Do you want to be loaded back into Foss again with the, the firing squad and energy there? Do you want the lads to, to low you in? They to be loaded love in? me, Mark. Do they love you? <laughs> ah, <great. laughs> they Except they love him. John, call those me. Uh, I think uh, go for and it. Foss are the two home teams I'd go yeah, for. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Right, and the final is Group D, the final one we'll look at this evening. And that's how Nevi Gullet beat St. Mary's. That was expected, 3-12 to 7 points. To be fair to St. Mary's, they gave a good account of themselves, but uh, uh, the uh, Nevi Gullet boys were just too strong. And then another game of the day, I suppose, was Glenn Flisk uh, versus Killarney Legion, 117 to 116. It looked like Legion's after... Uh, James E. Oh, don't know who had ran in along the sideline. Give, gave it to Peter McCarthy, who looked suspiciously inside the square, but maybe he wasn't. And he put it in the back of the net. And they had to go down. They got a penalty. Uh, they, they didn't. The, the what did I say? The Legion boys didn't like like the penalty decision, but it was given. And uh, Darrow Roach scored one ten, put it away, mm. and uh, they still had to get a win in added time. They got another attack, and uh, Tommy Bowler. Put it uh, over the Kevin. bar. Kevin, was it? Yeah. I think it was Tommy. But anyway, black hair. I'm sure it was well, Tommy. Tommy. It was, yeah. I think the lads uh, might have uh, uh, corrected that. Anyway, I think it was Tommy, yeah. He got two points uh, in the game. He got a free earlier and he got that point as well. And then, if he's the number nine. Is Tommy the number yeah. nine? Yeah, there's definitely number nine. Yeah. But then they came down to field Legion. And uh, as the ball was up on the air and one of the Legion guys caught it, the referee, Eddie Walsh, blew the final whistle. So... <laughs> <laughs> they surrounded him. Ah, nothing. I just questioned him as he went off the pitch. Uh, but Eddie's a tough man, so nothing happened there. But they were unhappy, Legion. But it was a crucial win for Glen Flesk. And now it sets them up very strong. And their meeting, uh, obviously, the Legion, the Invigula meeting this coming weekend is absolutely crucial. And providing you can get a guard escort from Fossa, <laughs> we'll be getting that live and exclusive on Clubber TV as well. John? What you see here and um, talk about the weekend games, maybe. Yeah, that Glenflesk Legion was always going to be tight, like a fantastic uh, game of football, like 117 to 116. To, uh, like, w- w- we didn't see it live, Mert, but it, it comes across as. A, a, yeah. as I as watched not, it back actually to the full game. The st- not far yeah. off the standard of the Dr. Croak's Dingle game. And you'd like a mm-hmm. couple of outstanding individual displays with Dara Roach getting 110, of course, a member of the. Kerry panel this year and then James O'Donnell who really rolled back the years oh, yeah. like he got he got five points from play he yeah. got uh, seven points in total and a David O'Sullivan there with uh, six oh, points uh, for good Legion player. He as was, well he used to play for as a younger player he was very good Jimmy David I remember oh, yeah. he played like when you same. consider there, like William Shine uh, Ryan O'Grady Finbar Murphy like all those players were missing for yeah. for Legion at this moment in time um they acquitted themselves really, really well, but it sets Tim up. Gamble had a very good game, and uh, the other player who who um, who caught my eye was well, Peter McCarthy. Obviously, uh, got to go, but Jonathan Line, another guy who was involved yes. with Kerry, yeah. he had a very good game as well. And again, that was kind of attack. The two teams attacked each other, didn't they, Jimmy? Very they win for it, yeah, back and forth, just like the Dingle Croaks game. There was really, I won't say there was no defence played, of course there was, but uh, there was mass defence. 
It no. sets up one of the most uh, important games of the weekend, though. Legion and Guinea Guilla is going to be absolutely wow. massive because it Legion know now that I, they have to win. I can tell you, being from East Kerry myself, there's never anything between them. No. That, that was always going to be a good game, no matter what. In these circumstances, I would expect it to be one of the games of the weekend. Right, and I think we are... The three would probably suggest that Glen Flesk will be too strong for St. Mary's at home. Oh, Mary's okay. will give it their all, but the way Mary's are going yeah. at Glen, the moment... Glen, Glen Flesk are down a lot of bodies, but St. Mary's at the moment just don't have the numbers on their the team. Numbers on their team. Great, so uh, so we're course. going for Glen Flesk. Um, yeah. on Sunday and um, and of course the longer Glenn Fles can progress and they get the likes of Luke Crowley back from America and stuff like that as the next couple of weeks go on yeah. they'll be in a much stronger position well, if they, they win this, the knockout stages if they win this yeah. they will be progressing uh, more than likely and uh, Legion and Nibula call that one for me oh this is a tough one I think Legion will win because they have to uh, what do you think I think Legion are just missing too many bodies I think Guinea Guilla I know you can't judge too much from the St Mary's game but one of the things about Guinea Guilla is you look at the spread of scorers and the amount of scoring options mm. I'm going to go for Guinea Guilla and that Sean O'Keefe and John O'Leary have been yeah. excellent all the year yeah. in the county yeah. league as well. and I reckon that kind of a decision to have to go for Guinea Guilla is really pains you a lot not to be able to tip up the Legion. And on that bombshell, <laughs> uh, that's the end of our look back and our look forward to the Kerry Petroleum um, Senior Cup Championship and the Intermediate Cup Championship. The Premier Junior, Junior stats as well this weekend. We'll get around to them at some stage, but uh, not today. So now I'd like to thank uh, the panel. I'd like to thank John O'Dowd um, for his contribution. Jimmy Darcy, as always. Mm-hmm. Um, a fountain of knowledge is probably what I say about him. And uh, to John C. O'Shea for his usual uh, excellent work in production and camera. Now, just a reminder again that there's uh, a lot of games on this weekend. We have the county hurling final on, on Sunday. We have games on Friday night and Saturday. And we have a couple of football games on Sunday as well. And as I said, if, if Killarney Legion or Crows can push their game back to 7.15... We'll even be happier bringing those games to you live and exclusive on Clubber TV. Don't forget, subscribe. This is the time to do it. We're only, this is only the second round of the club championship, so you're not, you're only one round missed. Forget those old boxes leave at home. Subscribe. Get the annual pass, and you won't regret it. You'll have action right up to November at the, uh, at the latest. So... That's it for now. Mark Murphy signing off and we'll see you again at the weekend and again next week with our look back and look forward.